Well, guess what, Frank? We're live. We're live on Facebook. We're live in Lab Code Agents. We're early. Let's, folks, this is check your watches. Nothing's happening in the world. We're just early for a change. Um, and, and we are back for our bi monthly webinar series with uh, guess what? A new, a new guest, Frank Garay, is here. It's been Brian Stevens up until now. So, Frank is with the National Real Estate Post. If you've never heard of the National Real Estate Post, you are living under a rock. I would even argue more so if you've never heard of lab code agents. So, you know, <laughs> the, these guys deliver so much quality value to the industry. And it's very tactical stuff, like stuff you're going to use in your business every single day. However, today we're going to kind of rewind the clock a little bit because you're looking at the OG of the National Real Estate Post. And Frank, I'm going to have you give a little bit of background on you because our, our audience hasn't met you yet formally. Um, and so welcome. We're going to actually talk about a little bit of video and how you could be doing something very similar to what Frank has done and built. Again, remember, Frank started doing vlogging, video blogging to email on an email audience before anybody had even heard of it. I mean, he is like the Gary V of the real estate industry. Um, Frank, I don't know if you've heard that before, but I just gave it. <laughs> we have. I have. <laughs> well, good. Well, then, then I'm just regurgitating yeah. it. So, Frank, yeah. welcome, welcome to our uh, state of the month with the National Real Estate Post. Frank Garay, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and a little about the background of your, that of the National Real Estate Post? I will, and it's and it's an interesting story. I'm not going to bore you. Trust me, this is kind of an interesting story, and I and the story itself is helpful in itself. So, uh, just, and I'll make it brief. So I don't want to, you know, you know, have you guys thinking you're not going to get, you know, something awesome out of this. But um, the the interesting thing was is back in before the big the the crash of 07, 08, 09, Back then, I know a lot of people on this call probably were around back then and. Uh, before that crash hit, I was running a large uh, net branch for a mortgage company. I had about 50 or 60 guys working for me at any given time. And, and I had all the brick and mortar to go with it. And, you know, back then, if you all remember, it was the same for real estate agents as it was for loan officers. I mean, everybody was just buying houses like crazy, right? Everybody was just buying houses, buying houses, buying houses, because they're just going to flip it or whatever. And so we were all just living high on the hog. And and I just had this feeling, you know, at, at that time, I'd been in the industry for 20 years and I'd seen markets come and go. And, and, you know, I just had this feeling like this just can't last, you know, something, something's gonna happen. And so I kind of panicked and because I had all these loan officers and all this brick and mortar that I had to support. And so I got some coaching and, um, and, uh, when I got that coaching going, um, I, I realized that I needed to start communicating with my people that were working for me. I got coaching and I wanted to be able to coach them essentially because I knew something was going to happen. I, you know, there was just so much refinance business and there was purchase business too, but I just knew something was going to happen. So I just was like, I have to engage with my people. And you know, the, the first inclination back then was, is to do the sales meeting, right? You know, like, okay, let's have a sales meeting once a week and get together. And, you know, so we could talk about things. And that was really tough to do because my, my people were spread out, you know, they were kind of spread out. And the only people that back then, and kind of like today that will show up to a sales meeting uh, are the people that don't really need the sales meeting. You know, it's just the weirdest thing, you know, you know the people that show up the sales meeting, the ones are like kicking butt, like what else we got, you know, the ones who weren't necessarily kicking butt, oh, I can't make it or, you know, something happened, my dog threw up or whatever, you know, and so um, anyway, you know, I was a little frustrated at the sales meetings not going well and one of my, one of my employees said, hey man, well, you should just make a video and and send it out. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not a bad idea, you know, and then so I had a webcam and it had a little piece of software in it that you could record a video and it would save it as a hard file on your computer. And so I did that and I emailed the hard file, right? I mean, that's, that's where we were at that time, you know, and I emailed the hard file and my broker who caught wind of it and loved the video. And uh, he tried to send it out to the entire company, which was like 1500 people. And because it was a video and he, and he did this big email blast of this, multi megabyte video, it crashed their whole system because it just couldn't handle the load of the, the video. So then my, my friend, same friend, um, oh, actually at this point, my brother was working for him. I mean, 
he's, he's learned what happened. He goes, well, you just got to use YouTube, man. And back then, I think YouTube wasn't even bought by um, um, by Google yet, right? It wasn't even, it was owned by the original guys that invented YouTube. And so I was like, what is this YouTube you speak of, you know? And so he turned me on to it. And then we started making these these YouTube videos. And, and I was doing it um, every single day. I would just make a YouTube video every day and I would send it to my loan officers. And I would just send them some sort of coaching message, you know, like, you know, do this today or try that today or do this today. And the weird thing about it was, is that it started just, and I would send it to my guys, you know what I mean? And then I would also send it to our broker, the guy who owned our mortgage brokerage company. And he would start, he started sending it out to the whole, the whole company, but then it started going beyond that. It started going outside of the company. And next thing you know, long and short of it, you know, we found, I found myself, you know, every single day speaking first, it was hundreds of people. Then it became thousands of people. My brother was helping me with it in the beginning, but then he had to move on. And so I got connected to my partner, Brian Stevens. Um, but when Brian came on board, that was like um, December of 2007. It started on July 2nd, 2007. That was the day I made my first video. And um, then when Brian came on, we just started to really escalate. And he would say it was all because of him, of course, but uh, I don't think that's the case. But but um, no, it just started to just blow up, man. And the next thing you know, we're doing these crazy videos and we're getting all this viewership and and uh, you know, we became this national thing. We had a, we did the, the one, there's two important videos for us in our career. There was, one was the HVCC video. I don't know if you remember these days, Jeff, but HVCC came along and, and where the, you know, Andrew Cuomo out of New York, you know, basically sued Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and said, you got to have appraisals handled differently and AMCs and all this stuff. And we had a petition, we called it the HVCC petition. And we sent it out and we got like, I don't know, 140,000 signatures on that. We literally went to meet, we printed all those signatures and went to New York to try and meet with Andrew Cuomo and present him all these signatures. And this is all the result of just making a video every day, right? And then our big one was when, uh, you know, uh, One West Bank bought the assets of um, IndyMac from the FDIC and uh, the FDIC struck a sweetheart deal where basically the way we interpreted it was that it was more beneficial for one west bank to foreclose on people than to try and put them into a modification and so you know because they would get compensated by the fdic so anyway we we put this video together and we were all angry and rah, 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 you know they're really hosing everybody down and i tell you that video i mean it went in excess of about 50 million views i'm i'm not bsing you because it it resonated with the consumers too. It wasn't just the industry people at that point. It was consumers. People were were ripping that video and putting it on their own YouTube pages. You know what I mean? And getting millions of views. You know that thing just went crazy. And the FDIC actually did a press release on us and said they're not telling the truth. It's not real. Do not listen to this video. That was the FDIC. You can still search it on Google. You'll find the FDIC did a press release on me wow. and Brian on this video. And uh, well, I mean, it's not like they're gonna come out and go, dad, you got us, they're right. That, you know, what are they gonna say? You know, they're not gonna. So um, anyway, long and short of it was, um, you know, we kept just going down this path of doing something every day and continued to grow viewership, you know, until we got, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand nationally now. Um, and we just kind of held there, you know, you lose people, people get out of the industry and you gain people. So we've just kind of been holding steady at about 200, or a little over 200,000, you know, mostly real estate and mortgage people, you know, um, the percentage uh, is probably still more mortgage technically than real estate. I think a lot of real, real estate people are still getting to know us. And that's because we were loan originators. So our lingo is more loan centric, you know, most, most of the time, but we do make an effort to actually talk a lot more about the real estate side um, and, and whatnot. We've actually back in the day too, like in 2011, 2012, uh, we were on tour basically across the country for a few years where we were coaching on video marketing and, and showing people that they could do, you know, that you can do this too. It's not that big of a deal. You know, it's actually really easy. And, and today it's even easier than it was back then. Uh, but you know, we had a couple of, uh, people, you know, latch on and take it and run with it. We had, I don't know if you're familiar with the RE source, 
Um, it's yeah. Ryan Hills and mm -hmm. Ryan Hills and uh, Ryan Christensen. And at the time they had a, a, another partner, Gary Hutchin, Hutchin, Hawkins, Gary Hawkins, Gary the Hawk. And uh, they came to one of our presentations. We were touring doing this and, and uh, came to one of our, our presentations, bought it and said, yeah, man, well, they didn't buy anything, just bought into the concept, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they started doing a weekly show that now has done wonders for, for, for Ryan Hills because he's still in the mortgage industry. He's managed because of the, the video marketing that he did, you know, after he learned how to do it from us, um, he's built up a massive mortgage team. They service a ton of real estate agents. They're one of the more successful branches for movement mortgage, you know, um, if not the most successful um, out there. And it, he can, he, he's admitted it many times that it's, it's because of the video work that they've done. And, and it's because, and it, when it all comes down to it, Jeff, I'm, you know, all it, it, the simplest thing with it is to have wild success with video is just consistency. In my opinion, it's just consistency. It's, you know, everybody worries about like hitting a home run, you know, on, on anything they say on video. And, and we've learned, let me tell you, we've had so many strikeouts. We've had so many foul balls. We've had so many, you know, base hits, you know what I mean? And bunts, you know, over our career of doing this every day, we do a video every business day and we've been doing it every business day. Um, July 2nd will mark, I think it marked 12, what is it? 13 years. Wow. So this month marked 13 years. We've been doing it every single business day. And I, you know, it's, it's just consistency. That's it. And I think a lot of people, you know, what happens is, is you start with something because you get excited about it and you think this is going to do something and then you do it like three or four times and you don't see an immediate result and you start questioning, well, maybe this isn't, but, you know, but it's like, I don't know if you're familiar with Carl White. He's one of, one of my great friends and he's a great mortgage coach. And he says so many times what people will do is, is they'll embark on some endeavor, you know, some marketing plan or something and they'll work it work it like here's the finish line here's success and they'll work it all the way up to here and they go eh, i don't think so and they go back here and they if they just would have went a little further something something would have happened and so you know honestly i think it's just consistently and it consistency and it's you know and it's not of course you want to send a good message you know what i mean i know you're a, you're a coach at this now and the way you teach is exactly the right way it's the way we always taught and, and it's, you know, you don't necessarily, you know, have to always have to have some amazing thing to say, you know, um, it's, you just got to be consistent with it. I mean, even if you just did it once a week, but you were consistent with it once a week and you always just did your best to try and provide some sort of value, whatever that might be. Um, you know what I mean? And just remind people what you do for a living. Me and Brian always taught value, entertainment, or enrichment. We found that those three things were things to talk about when you, you know, when you talk about something of value, you know, that's just something that I, I would put it this way as a, as a real estate agent, you know, you're still a, just a human being, right? And as you go about your day every day, if anything, anything strikes you, anything you see online or on the news or just in your daily life, you know, if anything gives you pause, right? That's something to talk about, you know? Um, another great one that I did, this is a funny story, Jeff. I, in the beginning, when me and Brian were doing this, we were still originating too. So we were using video marketing to originate loans as well as do this daily thing that wasn't making us any money. Doing the daily show didn't make us a penny for about three years. But, uh, and so, and that, just to give you pause there, I mean, we went three years doing this every day before that's we- important. That's important to point out. Yeah, before we actually really started making money, you know, on the national scope that we were doing. But on our individual business, we, we would still use it. And one of the most successful videos I had was what we call our entertainment video. And so many years ago in the state of California, uh, the law came down that you had to have Bluetooth in your car, right? Or you have to use Bluetooth for your phone you can't be talking on your phone in the car right you have to have blue either a headset or or something and there was this guy i forget who his name is skyler or something he's like a comedian and he did this hilarious video about the fact that now that he had a bluetooth headset when he drove his car now he had two hands free so like he's driving with his legs he's driving with his legs he's like doing a henna tattoo on somebody's shoulder in the passenger seat because now he's got two hands free he's, i'm just bluetoothing you know he's just 
you know, he's sharpening hockey skates while he's driving his car because he has two hands free now. And it was a hilarious video. Well, I was able to rip that video. And what I did is I put myself in the front of it. I recorded a video and I said, hey, it's Frank. Uh, it's, you know, the Bluetooth thing's coming out and you got to have it. There's a link down below for Bluetooth headsets, but check this video out. And then that's all I said. It was literally like five seconds of me in the front. I played, then I in, put in the, the funny video. Then I came out of it. And I go, I hope you found that funny. Again, there's Bluetooth. Uh, links down where you can get Bluetooth headsets down below. And if you have any mortgage needs, let me know. I, I handle mortgage loans. Dude, I got like 12 deals out of that video. Wow. That video went everywhere. It went kind of viral. It was already kind of a viral moving video, but I grabbed it and put it in my bottle and released it. You know what I mean? And it went viral for me, you know? And, and I got so many deals out of that. And so that would be, an, you know, kind of an example of entertainment, you know, and, when it comes to enrichment, what we mean by that is it's just, you know, if there's anything that, that, that you see or pulls on your heartstrings or anything like that, and just to talk about it, you know what I mean? And let people know, you know, I mean, our whole thing with video marketing, I'm sure it's very similar to what you do, Jeff. I mean, I don't, we, we always preached that, you know, if you're going to do more than one a week, which I would advise, right? If you can, you know, you don't always have to be real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, you know, you can just talk about something that's interesting to people or talk about something you found interesting or funny or, or whatever, you know what I mean? And then at the end of your video, you just say, Hey, don't forget I do real estate, man. If you have, if you have any questions or you need any help with that, just hit me up, shoot me a message or whatever. I'm happy to help, you know? So, but it's just a matter of being consistent with it and having, you know, you know, always having, we preach, always have a call to action at the end. You know, if you need any help with this, let me know. But if you can do that with consistently, uh, it's a wonderful way to, to, to market because today, especially with the way you teach Jeff and what you've got going on today, it is so easy to make a dang video and release it and have it instantly accessible, uh, by so many people. Um, it's just, it would be just crazy not to be participating in it. It's, it's not a big deal. And, and you know, the sooner you can kind of get over yourself a little bit, you know what I mean? Like some people still to this day worry about it, you know, worry about it. my hair. I mean, my hair is a disaster. I can't get it cut. I had to cancel damn haircut yesterday, but, but you know, you just kind of worry about those things, but don't worry about those things. You know, you are who you are. You have friends, you have people who love you, people who like you and video is, you know, all it's going to do is just let other people get to know, like, and trust you, which is, you know, an, an, an important thing, you know, and if you're just constantly there, I mean, it's not everybody is ready to buy a house today, you know, not everybody's ready to list their home today. And, and you can't expect, you know, your first video to get a listing, you know, you just can't expect that it would just be absurd to even consider that. But your hundredth video might, you know what I mean? In fact, then after that point, you might start to get pretty have a pretty good return. You know, I mean, let's be honest, you know, two or three listings a year off of doing a video, a couple of videos a week is Work. pretty damn good money. Yeah. Pretty damn good money. You know what I mean? Work. For just being a, you know, a real genuine person saying hi, you know, and talking about something a few times a week, but always reminding them, Hey, hey and by the way, you know, I sell real estate. If you need any help with that, let me know. You know what I mean? Yeah. People get to know you. They get to like your head. You got a real estate question. Hey, I got a question for you. What about this? And you all know how it goes. Once you start a conversation with somebody about it, that that's the big that's that's the big part, right? Once you can start an actual right. conversation with somebody, uh, then that can go many different directions. And dude, so I, I I feel like a I feel like a bobblehead as I'm standing here just shaking my head at everything that you say. And I've got a lot to say, but I'm going to try to condense it real quick because I want to digress on a few things that you said. Number one, uh, which is taking us back to this partnership between NARREP and, and LabCode agents. And you mentioned, you know, how you guys kind of built yourselves up. You are the Tristan of LabCode agents. Nick is the, is the Brian Stevens, right? That's ex the similarities are, are impeccable. You uh, are more known to the mortgage world. We are more known to the real estate world and we're starting to, you know, merge into each other's fields. It's just, I just I found that fascinating. I want to share I that too. with our audience. Um, but a couple of the things that you said, you know, you talked about, you, you mentioned it took three years for this to you, for you to make a dollar. Right. Dude, I have the exact same similarity. When I started making videos, I would did it. As, as a way to differentiate our business because we had changed companies at the time. And I didn't even know if it was going to work. 
but I did it. And, and now, you know, that's why I do what I do today. And I'm so prevalent in video, why we have a video school teaching people how to do videos. I'm, I'm speaking later this week to a group in St. Louis of not even real estate. It's like, it's like a painter's union to teach them how to do wow. social media. Cool. And I, I shot a quick, I shot a quick video, edited it in Viva video, put some gifts in it, sent it to the guy who's hosting it. And he was blown away. I'm like, dude, that took me 15 minutes. And, and I'm not saying everybody's going to learn how to do these skills right. like this, but the point and what Frank is saying is, is that you start by just sharing your thoughts, literally sharing your thoughts. You get a bomb bomb account, right? And you start talking to your customers via video versus text versus typing it. You get comfortable creating videos, sending it to your audience. And like, and like Frank said, it's like, it's funny, you, you mentioned this. I have a post today uh, that I had a, a promo piece created around it that says consistency is key. Like everybody spends so much time trying to create the perfect post. And the reality is because social media is so diluted today that by the time, you know, maybe it is a perfect post, but in two days, it's diluted and gone. Yeah. And so maybe you got several thousand views, but the person who's consistent every single day is getting seen more often. And that's the name of the game. And like Frank and Brian have done, they integrated it into an email strategy, which is mind blowing. They have a 200,000 person audience. Now, the reason I mentioned that is because that's not relatable to probably anybody on this call. And I don't want you to lose sight of, well, that's not what my goal is. And I agree with you. It's not your goal. Your goal is to stay top of mind with your audience. Starts with your existing audience. They're probably on your email list. Then it grows into that audience of people that don't even know they need you and they're going to use you, but they're out there. And social media creates that opportunity of an exponential audience, right? It's like a billboard. You have no idea who's driving by and seeing you and remembering right. you. Social media is the new billboard. And so to Frank's point, getting comfortable creating those videos and dude again you had the foresight and maybe it wasn't even foresight it was just it was dumb luck it was right but but that's just it and it, i can say the same for myself and 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 the opportunities that it now creates for me the opportunities that it creates for you or beyond any of our wildest dreams and the point is to real estate agents and mortgage lenders is the more that you get on uncomfortable get in front of that camera get in front of your audience face to face because you can't physically uh the more it's going to to create that memorable experience or that memorable brand and they can feel your emotion and they can feel your tonality and they can just they know like and trust you without actually knowing you and again to frank's point he was flying around the country in 2012 teaching this and still to this day, it's a minute percentage of people that are executing. It's far more than there was eight years ago. But for those of you who are sitting there thinking to yourself, yes, yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, it's too late. No, it's not too late, right? Yes, you know. And no, it's not too late. The quicker you get on the bandwagon, the quicker you start doing this stuff. And whether or not you go out and say, well, I have no idea how to do it. Well, then hire the business video school. That's what we designed it for. We designed it because we're passionate about it. We want to teach it. Uh, but just following platforms like Lab Coat, you're already doing it. Following platforms like the National Real Estate Post, getting ideas of watching how simplistic this actually is, that's all you have to do, Frank. So I want to talk more about value, entertain, and rich. That's really good. If you didn't take that, take that down. What do I talk about on my videos? Value, entertaining, and rich. Enrich is like education, right? So let's talk about each one. Give a real estate agent, and Frank, you weren't expecting these questions, so I'm going to see which how you answer them. Give me an example, a good example for a real estate agent of how they can bring value through a video. So value, what that would be in my mind or what it is in our mind is, is it, the value proposition is, can a lot of times be actually real estate centric, right? So um, for example, one of, the, one of the good reasons to subscribe to the National Real Estate Post is every single day, we're going to talk about something related to the real estate business, right? Every single day. So you're going to see, you know, real estate news, right? Essentially every day, but you'll get our kind of warped twist on it, you know, which, you know, hopefully entertains you a little bit, but, but it's having something to speak about that provides them some sort of value as far as 
um, you know, the industry is concerned. So you could talk about the whole forbearance thing. Hey, you might be considering getting a forbearance. Be careful about doing that. I watch, I, I read a lot of news where actually, if you really don't need to do it, you probably shouldn't do it because it could cause your problems down the road. You know, that's something of value. Another great value one is, and this is a fun, fun, fun strategy, guys. Yelp. Okay, now bear with me on this, but Yelp. So, you know, in Yelp, uh, in your area, they have events, okay? And there are local events. Now, this might be very different today because of the COVID and all that, but I bet they still have stuff. But in Yelp, they have events. Now, we're in the Bay Area. We're very close to San Francisco. And we were teaching this strategy of just letting people know what's going on in their surrounding areas. That's something of value. Um, we're close to Napa. Uh, we were in there uh, one time making the example. We looked up Napa events and there was a chocolate tasting and wine tasting event where you got to learn how to properly pair chocolates to wines. And it was a thing where you got together, you paid some money and you were drinking wine and eating chocolate. What a cool event, okay, in, in Napa. But people don't even know about it. So when you can make a little video and say, hey, man, I just want you know, man, there's this really cool event coming on in Napa. You like chocolate? You like wine? They're doing this thing where you taste chocolate and pair it with wines. And, you know, it costs like 30 bucks to get in. You're just going to sit around with a bunch of people and enjoy chocolate and wine all day. And then the link to the Yelp event is right down below. You can just click on it so you can see where it is and figure out all that information. And don't forget, you know, I sell real estate. If you need any help with that, let me know. There was one, um, there was another one that was really great, uh, Jeff. It was, and Brian did this. So we're doing this. We're looking and we go in San Francisco. We look for events. Well, it was a BYOBW party. So we all know BYOB, right? Bring your own mm -hmm. bottle, right? No, mm -hmm. this was BYOBW. It was bring your own big wheel. Now, do you remember the plastic big wheel? The, oh, hell yeah. As a, oh, hell as yeah. a kid, the, the big wheel? Oh, well, yeah. do you know where do you know what Lombard Street is in San Francisco? Uh, well, the, Lombard the, Street, the, yes, Lombard Street is this brick street that is goes like this, is a zigzag down this very steep hill. Okay, it's pretty dang far. Well, it was on Easter. They did this event. They do this event once a year where you bring your own big wheel and a football helmet or whatever. You got to register, but you can race down Lombard Street on a big wheel. Okay, and try and win a prize or something like that. We were just like cracking up. We we're like, you have got to be kidding me. And there's all, there's all these pictures, these guys, they come with red radio flyer wagons and big wheels and tricycles and they wear their football helmets and they go crashing down the street. What a cool event to talk about, right? What a cool thing to talk about. Nobody knew about it. We didn't know about it. You know what I mean? But so making use of Yelp um, as far as... Um, Events is concerned is so simple, so easy. You could do one one a week. You could go into Yelp in your area, look up events, and it doesn't have to be your city. It could be surrounding cities. People are willing to, you know, go, you know, you know, something like that. Another another item of value would be um, restaurants. Now that's tough today too, but you know, restaurant reviews. You know what I mean? Where you're. Mm -hmm you know, popping around different restaurants. Hey, I ate at this restaurant. This is what I had. It was fantastic, man. The, you know, the link to, to websites down below. Things like that are valuable, you know? Yeah. And so that's what we mean by value. But it can also be industry related. You know what I mean? You're hearing in the news, you know, that, you know, if you're, or if you're one of the ones that are thinking you should wait to buy, well, all the news is saying you should be buying now, you know, and have something you can point to though. You can even point to our show as the link. I follow these guys. They're reporting on it. The link to the show is down below if you want to learn more. Yeah. But if you got any interest, you know, give me a call. So it almost, I mean, it almost covers your ass by doing it that way, too, uh, mm -hmm. which I would consider that in the enrich category. It's, it's more of an education. And since you brought it up, I'll, bring, I'll give you another idea. So as an agent or a loan officer, you get questions from clients all the time. Let's just say somebody sends you an email question or calls you and says, hey, what's escrow? Boom. There is a video topic. There's a video. You know, yeah. I just had a customer call me and wanted to know what escrow is. So I thought I'd put out a video to explain what escrow is. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a boring topic, but it might hit somebody who needed it on that particular day. And now they know you and remember you and you gave them an education value, right? And so those are the kind of things that as an agent, I know they struggle with content. You just gave them great ideas for just local. It's so easy. It's right in front of your face but you have to switch it, take the content, 
turn it into value, turn it into a video to be seen more often. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, everybody, they can just get that in their, uh, they can get that on the internet. They can get that, they get that in their commercials. They get that in their newspaper, whatever the hell it, your excuse is. So what? Don't assume, just be seen. And the more that you're delivering that value, even if they already know about it, you're being seen more than the guy or gal down the street. And it's creating an opportunity for you to maybe win somebody else's business. So, so while, while we're on the education side, that's pretty easy and it's pretty boring content. Um, in my opinion, it should be like less than 20% of your content because people will unfollow you if you're boring. Right. If all you talk um, about is that, but, it's no good. But sprinkle it in, right? Sprinkle it in. Definitely. And, and you guys have done a really good job of, give, of, of literally, you guys put out, in my opinion, the most boring content. It's relevant. It's necessary. But you make it very entertaining and you make it to where people want it by evidence of 200,000 opt-in email list. And that I think entertainment is the, where most people struggle. Some of us just have it in, it's just a part of our being you and Brian. It is for me. I think it's, it's pretty easy for me. I'm just a goofy dude, but for most, they struggle with that. So do you have any advice for somebody who says, I really don't know how to entertain. Yeah, no, I do actually. And, and my, what we call the video sandwich is what I talked about where I put my little video in the front of that funny video. And then I put my little video on the end of it for the call to action. I put the actual funny video in the middle, like a video sandwich is what we used to call it. But that's kind of tough to do just because, you know, there's editing involved at that point. Right. And there's, there's moving parts and things like that. But I would just say, um, uh, you know, is to take advantage of other things that are, that are entertaining. If the way we always taught it, Jeff, was if you see or hear anything funny to you at all, right, it's probably going to be funny to everybody else. Okay. Now, you do have to be careful with that because if it's, you know, if it could be construed as being bad, right, you don't want to do that, you know, dirty jokes, you know, bad joke, you know, things like that. That's not something you want to do. You know what I mean? But if it's clean, you know, just funny, something's entertaining. Um, or how about this? Um, how about this? Um, you know, I always, when I'm going down my Facebook wall, anytime I see that I'm subscribed to some group and it's animals, but it's, animals doing just really cute super over the top like i can't believe that animal just did that or you know or i can't you know like those those types of things are entertaining right they're they're entertaining to me and just being able to even do a video if you you to just keep in mind even on facebook it's so easy just to do a video and say i saw this video it's these two cats they're so adorable you know what i mean the link is right above you just got to check it out let me know what you think you know by the way you know, if you need any help with real estate, let me know. And I'm telling you, people, even though they have to click the link to open the thing to see the other video, they'll do it, right? Especially if they like dogs or cats or whatever it is you're talking about. Yeah. They'll do it. And when they're done with it, they're back on your thing and they'll, they'll put a little comment. They'll put a little comment down there. Oh, that was awesome. Now I love cats too or whatever. So anything that you can find that just makes you like laugh, you know what I mean? When we talked entertainment, we were always talking fun, laugh, you know, like mm -hmm. that was that lifted me up. It was funny. You know, it was, you know, just getting that information, just sharing it with them in some way, shape or form. But you are on video letting them know, I found this video. It's so cute. It's so hilarious. Yeah. It's about this. I don't even bother you. Just click the link, leave a comment down below. And don't forget if you have any real estate needs, I'm here to help you out. You know, something as simple as that, because when people do that, uh, if you do that fairly consistently, um, you know, when people see you pop up, they're going to go, Oh, what is it this time? Right. They're going to they'll actually look forward to it and, and say, well, what was it this time? And so honestly, I mean, like here we are talking. If you use the Yelp strategy, which is super easy to do. Right. There's you know, there's some value. Right. You can do that on like Monday, you know, like on Wednesday. If you happen to find a cute video you think is really entertaining or, or fun, you could refer to that on, you know, Wednesday. And then maybe on Friday you do something that's, you know, directly related to your industry. You know what I mean? Something like that. Just so you're. You know, I, and I agree a thousand percent with Jeff. That's what we have always taught too. It's like we would say, you know, three, three that have nothing to do with real estate. But at the end of every one of those, remind them that that's what you do, and you're here to help them. Mm -hmm. Always remind them that's what you do, subtle. right? Or, or or this or this. Wear the hat, the, the branding, subtle, yeah, right. something mm -hmm. like that. You know, um, but then you know maybe maybe the fourth one is or the fifth one, which would be twenty percent, right? The fifth one 
um, is, is, you know, sure, you know, let's let them know something about the industry. Let's just, you know, a new listing that you got, you know, hey, I got this new listing. Here's why it's super cool. If you're interested, let me know. If you're looking for anything else, let me know. Have a great day. Because you kind of earn that, you know, by, by not always talking about it, you earn that one where you get to talk, get to talk about it. You know what I mean? Another thing I want to bring up to you guys is I know Facebook is obviously the easiest way to do things today, right? You can instantly record something and it's there and people are looking at it like immediately, right? I know that's the easiest way, but, and I don't, I'm not sure exactly if you teach about putting it on YouTube or anything like that, Jeff, but, but, you know, just understand this, even if it is just on Facebook, no matter where you do it, just understand every video you create is like just building up equity. It's, it's, it's building marketing equity because those videos, they technically, they never go away. They just never disappear. They're always there. Uh, even if they pass off the timelines, sometimes they come back. You know what I mean? They, they come back and people find them because people do search stuff, you know, and they'll find it. So make sure you hashtag things, you know, tag things, you know, so if people do a search of some kind, your video might pop up. And it's just building up marketing equity. The video builds up marketing equity like nothing else, I, in my opinion. It's I like nothing else. Yeah, hundred percent agree. We have we have one question. Uh, somebody, Eric, asks: Are there any tips on how to title your video to drive interest? And I'm going to answer that first. Then I'm going to let Frank answer it from his perspective because we're going to always give two different perspectives. Um, one, when you say title. I think of the video title, AKA how you intro your video, which I say always should be a hook. In other words, every time you do a video, it doesn't matter what video, personal or business, always lead with intrigue, lead with a question, lead with something that creates FOMO. Anything, it doesn't matter what the topic, think about something that you can say that's going to create intrigue, that's gonna get them to stick around. Because remember, you have about three seconds to grab their attention. So if you lead with, hey guys, happy Saturday, happy Monday, hey, it's Jeff here, Those, that, that takes up your three seconds, you've already lost them. Get True. good at practicing how to title your videos by hooking, and then you use the same verbiage in your caption. So start it with a question, or start it with a, a statement that's gonna create intrigue. And if you need examples of that, you're always welcome to DM me. Uh, but Frank, what's your opinion on how to title a video to drive interest? It's exactly what you said. I mean, I couldn't say it any better. And that's what we always try to do. Like even with our show, um, our show is very email based simply because when we started it, that's what there was. I mean, their Facebook wasn't even anything yet, you know? And um, so we built up this, this database on email. And so for us, we have two hurdles to get through. Uh, before we can actually even get in front of somebody. And the first hurdle is the subject line, right? The email subject line is, is clutch. You know, it, it just because it came from Frank and Brian at the natural state post and they like Frank and Brian at the natural state post, they read the subject line and they're, you know, they're going to be like, what is it today? You know, and if it doesn't kind of grab them a little bit, they'll move on. I mean, you know, even though we got 200,000 subscribers, we don't get 200,000 views every day. Not everybody watches every day. Why would they? I wouldn't. You know, you wouldn't, you know, it's just like, I'm going to, I'm, I allow, they allow us to come into their inbox every day because we've earned that respect. Right. And, and that, and they've given us that loyalty, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're always going to tune, tune in. It just, it has to get them going. Right. So yeah, it, the way, the way that I do it, cause I do the subject line or the title of the show every day, you know, I, it's so hard and, and I know you're going to struggle with it, but you just got to try every day just to imagine like, would I open it? You know, I'm busy. I got things going on. You mm. know, would I engage with it? You know, if I wasn't, it might, you know, we might just default to what it actually is somehow, but what it actually is somehow uh, might not be enough to, to get it. But I love what Jeff said about a question is always good. You know, it's like, if you can do a question, it's always good, especially if it can somehow have some sort of relevance to them possibly today. You know, a question is always is always good, but yeah, I mean, there's no great answer for that. It's it's really it's just you just work on it every time. You know, every time you every time you do it, you work on it. There's actually a couple of websites I can't remember what they are where you could actually put in a title or a subject line, and it'll grade you on like you know if it's deliverable, if it'll make it through a spam filter, if it'll you know, or if it, if it's relevant, you know, if it's good enough, you know, I forget well, stuff I used to YouTube, use. In the old days. 
YouTube has this too. It's called Tube Buddy. And if you subscribe to it, it's fairly inexpensive. It's grading everything. It, it's, it's giving you suggestions on keywords. It's grading your caption or your title. It's grading everything that you do. It's called Tube Buddy. So if you're on YouTube, uh, it's integrated into your YouTube. So once you sign up for it, it integrates in and it has all these little features that show you analytics and show you the stuff. It's a good tool to use. Um, what, what I typically suggest is again, is just like, like you said with the question, but think about what, you, what it is you're talking about. And like I said, it doesn't matter because if I do a video, like a personal video, just showing my family, a lot of times I will lead in the same thing with, with some sort of a hook. I don't have to, it's personal, it doesn't matter, but it's just because it, it's practice. It takes practice. And what, we teach this, uh, Frank. And so I get agents all the time that will message me on the weekend and be like, hey, I'm at a, I'm at a new open house, or I'm at a new listing and I'm struggling to come up with a hook. I'm going to go live. And I'll be, and if I have time, I'll be like, FaceTime me, show me the house. And usually it's really easy. It's just, you know, a lot of times it's a visual, visual hook. Like if, if you have a house that's on the ocean or on a lake, give them the visual stimulation of something amazing about that house that grabs your audience's attention. Then you pop into the video, also give them another verbal hook. You know, if you would love to live on Lake so-and-so, I've got the listing for you. And then you go into the whole, the boring spiel because the people, at the end of the day, all of the stuff you're creating, like Frank said, not all 200,000 are watching it. You're not going to go viral unless you're on TikTok. That's your only opportunity to go viral anymore. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to go viral. That's not the point. The point is to sell a house or to, to, to gain another client, right? So it doesn't matter if you have 2 million views. If you have 2 million views and zero sales, that video did squat for you other than right. branding. But if you have a video that had two views and you got one sale out of it, which one would you rather have? Totally. The one with two all views, right? So it's, so stop thinking about it that way. Stop thinking about what people think. Stop thinking about are, how are they going to judge me? Screw them, right? Don't worry about it. Just do it. Just put yourself out there. There always is going to be haters and naysayers. You just have to push past it. I just got done talking to one of my LOs about this where, you know, we're, we're in a, in a, if there's any loan officers on this call right now, you know what the mortgage industry is going through right now. Massive volume, longer turn times. It's a struggle. And my loan officer said to me, well, I struggle with the concept of should I be going after new business? Should I be prospecting right now when I know I have to tell an agent, well, I might need a 45 day contract because I know they need to. But like I told him, I said, you know, I have the same issue, if you will, with social media. People judge me and say, well, your business is so busy. Why are you creating TikToks? Why are you creating videos? You should be in your business. No, I'm never going to stop prospecting. So whether I'm doing it late at night or early in the morning or on the weekends, you should never stop doing that. And that's, I think you said it best, Frank, they get all the way to here and then they pull back. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening to a lot of people in our industry right now. Mortgage professionals, they got here. Now they're super busy and they pulled back. They stopped right. doing all the things that got them there. And that's why they're just going to continue to muddy along at that same level rather than break through because guess what? Things are going to slow down. And they always do. It might be September. It might be October. It might be 2021. I don't know when that's going to be. When that happens, those of you that stopped, pulled back, you're going to be back climbing that hill again. Mm -hmm. You're going to be pissed. You know, so keep doing what got you there. Maybe it's a little bit less, but keep doing it. Even when you are prospecting, even if you're going through what my loan officer is going through, I'm going through it with growth. I've literally got people that want to join our company, join my group, and I'm holding them back because I realized I can't handle them right now. We're set up to fail. So, but here's what I'm not doing. I'm not going silent, staying in their face. And this is all relatable to every, every salesperson of any kind, right? You know, you get to a point where you can only handle so much business, and you, but you've got to stay in their face. That's the key. Um, and sorry, I went down a total rabbit hole there. No, I, it was great. I was, I was totally right and agree 100%. And you hit it right on the head, dude. You are saying all the right things that make all the sense. All the sense in the world, man. And um, so, so, in, so give us a recap. Give us a recap because, again, if you guys joined us late, you missed my intro about Frank. Frank is like the OG. He's the Gary V of the real estate industry when it comes to vlogging, period. I, I don't know if anybody has done it longer. Maybe there's somebody out there, but they have not done it at the level that Frank has done it. And he, the advice we're giving you today is not rocket science, folks, but we're trying to drive it home. Like, you need this. And he gave some very 
simple tactical tips. Like I'm not an entertainer. Great. Go take somebody else's entertaining content and share it. Yeah. It's so good. It's so yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what, exactly. what do you have uh, in, in kind of summary? What can you I, give you know, our audience? To- here's the other thing that I would, I would wrap up with. And this is something that me and Brian just started doing. Um, we had always, you know, let any comment come through on our show always, right? So whether good, bad, they hate us, they love us, it didn't matter. We let it all come through. And because we felt like, well, we're a public figure, so let it all come through. Um, I've had a change of heart on that. And because I, because Facebook and social media can be very, very ugly places and they can be very ugly for all the wrong reasons. And, and people are just nasty and will say things, um, you know, that are not true, you know, and they miss the point, you know what I mean? And then there's just people who really, if they're not on Facebook causing problems, you know what I mean? They just don't feel like they're alive. It's just who they are. Trolls. And they're, they're, yeah, they're just trolls and it's just not necessary. And I will tell you this, no matter what you do, don't ever fear that. If you can delete a comment, delete it. If you can block the person from ever coming back, just block them. It's not worth your time. It's not worth the stress. It's not worth the aggravation. Keep everything positive. It's so that when you make a post, you know what I mean? If you see anything negative in there, delete it, block the person so it doesn't come back. You know what I mean? So that when somebody review it, they only see the good things because you know what, gosh, darn it. I only want to see good things. I, you know, I, I would rather be made happy by looking at something than get disturbed or angry or worked up. That shouldn't be associated to me. I don't want it to be associated to me because I'm not a bad, ugly person. I'm a good person. I like to think I am. I only want the best for everybody. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to help. And I know you feel the same way as a real estate agent. You want the best for everybody? You're just trying to help, man. So if you ever get cyber bullied or anything like delete it, mm-hmm. block it, get rid of it. You don't have time for it. And if they go, oh, well, they blocked me. Great. You could do that in your little world. And you go over there, all your little bully friends and be bullies with each other and complain about everything. But in my world? Everything's going to be rosy and full of sunshine, man, because that's what I'm all about, man. I know. I saw your shirt today. I was like, that's such a great shirt. And it's, and it's absolutely true. So, cause I know a lot of people fear that part, you know, to get started, they fear that part. They fear, like you said, being judged. They fear someone saying something nasty. You know what I mean? Someone who you don't even know, doesn't even know you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're going to come on your post and say something nasty. Bye bye. You don't yeah. need it. And the, you don't yeah. have the responsibility to allow everything on your post. You don't. Yeah. This is your post. This is your marketing message. This belongs to you and nobody else. And you have the absolute right to let nice people in and kick bad people out. And so do it. And don't worry about it. Yep. Keep your eye on it. If you see something negative, if there's any way that you can delete it, delete it. Block the person. You have no need for it, none whatsoever. Well, you, you, know what, you know what happens, and I've got two other – first of all, I think that's the best advice. Uh, but for those of you that don't like that idea, the thing that happens is, as humans, when somebody does that, you'll find people will come to your defense. And it's actually really rewarding for me to leave that post on there, and I'll do one of two things. I'll respond with kindness because it throws off assholes every single time. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How can you be nice to me? I'm a jerk and I'm gonna keep being a jerk and I'll just keep being nice back to them. And then my audience is saying, wow, he handled that really nicely. I like him even more now. And I'm gonna type and come to his defense, right? That's one other way to do it. The other thing is, and I heard learned this from Sharon Srivatsa, it's called a pattern disrupt. When you get a troll, because Sean's got millions of followers, he'll respond sometimes with like one word, turtle, or, or just something totally random. It's called a pattern disrupt because the hater doesn't know what to say then. Like you just totally threw them off. They're expecting you to, to spout off with them. That's one thing you don't do. Frank's right. Just delete. Just type delete. Don't just get rid of it. If you want to spout off, you're stooping to their level and you're making yourself look like an idiot. It's, it's just stupid. And the way you said it is, is a good way to, to do it. I mean, we have done that before. Hey, sorry, feel that way. You know, you know, I hope wish you the best. You know, you could certainly 
take the high road in writing. You know what I mean? You could certainly do that, which will, other people will see that. Um, but me lately, man, I'm just like, and this is just me personally, do whatever's in your thing. That. For me, yeah. gone. Just don't need it. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. not, you know, it's, it's, you know what, that's my post. It's, I can do whatever I want with it, you know, and I will do whatever and I want with it. And I will only energy, let, negative energy is powerful. It, it is. And it's just not worth it. You know, if people want to take the yeah. time to be nasty, I mean, they're just not your people anyway. Right. I mean, I don't think so. Me, you do what you want, but for me, somebody starts to get nasty with us anymore. You know, even today I, we had a, our post on, uh, Oh, it's get, it's get, we got to get going here. I do. But, but yeah. so I did an interview with Bill Hart and he's a, a real estate mortgage coach, super good guy. And, and he was simply talking to all the loan people out there saying, Hey man, you know, I know you're all super, super, super busy, but understand, don't brag about it or boast about it because you didn't do it. It's just the market, right? So um, it's really just, you know, understand you're just blessed right now. You've got a lot of business, take care of it well, but be on the lookout and make sure you're working, you know, make sure you're trying to find ways to make sure you can sustain something if all this goes away. You know, you have to still survive. One of the, con it's great video, great message, nothing negative, all positive first comment right oh really really you know as originators we're subject to the market and that's it that's just part of life and that's the way it is like you're gonna really cool. you're gonna really step into this nice post that was very encouraging and positive and take a big deuce in the comments on it <laughs> i went i went you know so that other people could jump into your deuce pile and and start to swim around in it with you on my show uh -huh. I don't right. think so. Bye. Delete. You're out of here. No time. No time for it. No, no there time. Is. There's plenty of people out there. Here's the other thing too, with the, with the ugliness and naysayers. Trust me, there's plenty of people who just don't engage it, right? Who see it, right? And think like you. you no, know, that was terrible, right? You know what I mean? There's plenty of them. So yep. just get rid of it. And that's my thing. I say just love get it. rid of it. You don't need it. I love it. That's the best advice. That is the best advice. Yeah. I love it. Frank, this has been fantastic. Uh, we're, we're coming up on an hour, so let's wrap it up. Uh, we yeah. will be back. We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to the National Real Estate Post, Frank, what's the best way to do that? Just go to thenationalrealestatepost.com or you can go to um, nrepdaily.com. National Real Estate Post, NREP nrepdaily.com and there's a big orange subscribe button you can just subscribe there uh, and just so you know we, we're very close to having the mobile app done the mobile app so you won't even need to deal with emails or you know any of that stuff it'll just be an app you drop it on your phone and when a new post comes out bleep, you can click it and just do it all from your phone it's be here shortly you know you know my advice to the, the, our audience is first of all if you don't subscribe it's daily content so like frank said you're not going to watch every day right you're going to you're, you're going to you're going to be busy on sundays but here's the deal they put out really good content and so that is a source not only for you to be smarter but for you to take content and regurgitate it to right. be the expert to your audience yeah that's exactly what you should be doing with this and uh, they do a phenomenal job of it yeah, in fact, we're going to have Tristan on this week, and we're going to talk about Zillow and the dot loop thing, you know, which I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see what, Z what Tristan thinks about this, because a lot of real estate agents are up in arms about it, and I, I, I need to understand it. So we're going to have, you know, the lab code agent expert jump on our show yeah, heck yeah. and, and heck teach yeah. everybody what the heck is going on with this Zillow dot loop thing. So it's going to be good. It's going to yeah, be good. Man. Frank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go on. Do you have anything else to add? No, not at all. I just, you know, I'm wildly encouraged by the ad or the, uh, what's the word? Like the, the whole video thing has really started to flourish over the past several years. And especially with the COVID pandemic, there's so many people now that have shows with, you know, the microphones and the, you know, and, and me personally, I, I remember years ago, nobody was doing this. You know, we were the only ones, but but I'm, I'm actually super encouraged by it. I just, I'm so excited that people are diving into this and learning that this is really easy to do and it's something that could be very, very beneficial. And, and there's plenty to talk about, man. There's, yeah. there's plenty to talk about and you don't have to do it every day, but if you can do it two or three times a week, just something short, some value, some entertainment, something, remind people what you're here to help them with. I mean, I think if you stay consistent with it, you'll find that it's going to be beneficial, but you gotta stay consistent. Don't, 
I mean, you should tell yourself, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for a year. And then I'll, then I'll reevaluate because, you know, if you go that long, I guarantee you're going to find yourself getting some good business out of it. I mean, I just guarantee if you're consistent, you just consistency is the trick. So, and that consistency will drive consistency. It becomes easier. The more you do it, you start two, yeah. three days a week, it'll turn into five. Like yeah. you, you won't, every week you'll go into the week saying, I'm not sure what I want to talk about this week. And it'll just start coming to you. Um, right. And so I, I can speak from experience on that. Well, Frank, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. And uh, we will see you or Brian back in two weeks. Yep. Same day, same time. And Lab Code Agents, thank you for all being on. Frank, I'll talk to you later this week. All right. Thanks, man. Catch you guys later. Right. Always a pleasure. See you guys. Bye. Bye.